एस टीवी इंग्लिश द सोल्यूशन फॉर ह्यूमैनिटी Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Dear brothers and sisters, this is your host Giva Romani Welcome to another episode And we are discussing the topic of the middle path Previously we talked about extremism How to stay away from extremism on both sides, both sides of the spectrum How to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The clear path that was decreed for us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was exemplified in detail by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was practiced by his companions and those who came from the next generations and how you know to engage our youth the ones who are the target of extremism on both sides people become very lenient they don't practice Islam they start committing sins and following their shahwat their desires and then the people who become too harsh and then leave the sunnah of the Prophet and they think that they can do more than the Prophet وسلم, more and have a better understanding than the Prophet and the companions and they follow these shubahat, these doubts yani, that lead them again into a different form of extremism. Today, uh, my dear respected uh, scholars, we want to give some practical tips inshallah and some advices to our brothers and our sisters, our viewers on how to achieve the middle path then. How do we follow this sunnah, this Wasatiya, this middle path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for us. And as always, Jazakul Khair for coming. Assalamu alaikum to all of you. Alaykum salam. Let us start with uh, Shaykh Asim al Hakim. How do we achieve the middle path? What are some steps that we can take, practical steps, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillahi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa mahtada bi hudahu amma ba'd. It is quite difficult to list how to be moderate, because you're talking about listing everything about Islam. And Islam is a religion of nature. And whenever you go against your nature, then you are not following the moderate path, you are in extreme. When we look at a hadith, for example, the Prophet ﷺ saw a rope dangling from the ceiling. And he said, what is this? They told him it is for one of the mothers of the believers, she prays at night, and when she feels tired, she hangs up so that she could stand. This goes against your nature. No. Allah doesn't want you to kill yourself or to burden yourself. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, untie it. When one has the agility, one has the power to pray, pray. And when you feel asleep, go ahead and sleep. Subhanallah. So if you look at aspects of aqeedah, you will find that there are extremes and our way, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah or the Salaf or those who follow the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, is the middle path. So you have Khawarij and you have Murji'ah. They both contradict one another, though they all share the concept that Iman is a whole entity. Either it's there all the way or it's gone all the way. Islam, the real Islam, the moderate Islam differs with both extremes and says no a man increases and decreases depending on the good deeds and the sins now when you look in ways and forms of purity you have extremes there are people who may pray without wudu there are people who may pray with only washing half of the arm and those who pray while spending half an hour performing wudu <laughs> so again you have extremes when you come to things that are permissible to eat, Sheikh Ahmed mentioned that there are those who make life impossible and say, no, it's haram to eat meat. 
You have to be a vegetarian. And there are those who don't care what kind of meat you eat, whether it's dead or of a swine or whatever. It's all meat. Let's eat. So you have so many tendencies around that it is extremely difficult to follow the right path if you don't have knowledge. Hmm. With knowledge, your darkness becomes light. With knowledge, your confusion becomes reality and certainty. But when you don't have knowledge, it's an easy fall. And sometimes it's a spiral downfall into hell because you don't know what to do. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, may Allah be pleased with him, he was a great companion of the Prophet ﷺ. Young, enthusiastic, knowledgeable, and he used to write down everything that the Prophet used to say or do. Abu Huraira says that Abdullah and I were competing in narrating hadith. I used to memorize, but Abdullah used to write. Abdullah ibn Amr, his father, they say that the difference in age is about 11 years between the father and the son. Well, let's assume it's more than that, but his father, Amr ibn al-As, was one of the great Arabs, intellectual Arabs, very keen and clever. He wanted to get his son married, so he chose a woman from a good family in Mecca, and they got them married. A few weeks later, he goes and checks upon his son, and he finds his daughter-in-law. So he asks her, how is Abdullah with you? And this Qurayshi woman was a woman of a you know, noble family. She said, MashaAllah, he fasts all day and prays all night. He's a righteous man. Amr ibn al-As is not Smart. sucking his thumb. <laughs> he's, he's a genius. He immediately took the message and understood it that this man, two weeks after marriage, no until now he did not even touch me. Allah. No consummation. Yeah. So he goes immediately to the Prophet because he knows his son, in a sense, is a hopeless case. <laughs> in the sense that he loves Allah Azza wa Jal to the extent that he would think and believe that what I'm doing is the right thing. So he goes to the Prophet and complains. The Prophet summons Abdullah. And he asks him a few questions without going into details. Abdullah says, I pray all night, and I finish the Qur'an once every night. Give me a break. I know Muslims that have not finished the Qur'an from cover to cover, except in five years. <laughs> you ask the brother, Akhi, when was the last time you finished Qur'an? Three Ramadans ago. And how many times do you finish it in Ramadan? He said, I don't. It takes me like a couple of Ramadans, three Ramadans. And he prays it once every night. And the Prophet told him, don't do this. Pray it once every at least every week, and in another narration, once every three days. How much do you fast? He said, every single day. I fast every single day. I never skip a day. The Prophet said, no, I said, fast three days a month. And then he went with him to the max, which is every alternate day, the fasting of Dawood. And then the Prophet gave him the golden rule, which we must apply. He says, Abdullah, Allah has rights over you. And your body has rights over you. And your guest has rights over you. And your family has rights over your wife, your children. The Prophet said, so give each its due right. The same incident took place with Salman al-Farisi and Abu Darda. And it's in the Sahih. And Abu Darda complained to the Prophet that Salman gave him the same advice. The Prophet said, Salman okay. had said the truth. This golden rule of being moderate, of being natural, if you pray all night long, you can't do that. Do you think you will last for long? Never. It will affect everything around you. It has a ripple effect. Maybe you will manage to do it a month, or two, a year or two, but then it would start to affect everything and the Prophet said, Each deed, whether good or bad, Islamic or un-Islamic, it has a peak. And each peak has a downfall, has a bottom level that it would reach. 
So this is human nature. If you start to embrace Islam and practice it, you feel like strong. But then there is a downfall to it. The Prophet says, فَمَنْ كَانَتْ فَتْرَتُهُ إِلَى سُنَّتِي فَقَدْ اِحْتَدَوْا Now whoever his downfall is to my sunnah, then you're guided. What does that mean? Your peak was to pray six hours a day. Your downfall to the sunnah is that you pray witr before you go to bed, or at least you don't miss witr per night. But your downfall would be that you quit praying altogether. Oh, yes. yeah. So the Prophet says that this is the moderation, level of moderation is his sunnah. And the Prophet says, And whoever his uh, fatigue, his lack of interest is to other than my sunnah, then he has gone astray and he's doomed. I'd like to comment on uh, this, anyone? There's no comment except another hadith where the Prophet ﷺ is addressing the youth and the Muslims in general by telling them, this deen, this religion is so vast. You can't do everything. So take it slowly, gradually. I have seen many youngsters when they started practicing Islam, mashallah, immediately short thob and kuhul and these and mashallah, mashallah. And Later on, they flipped. Many sisters from day one, gloves, niqab, and they take it too much. That goes against the fitra. You have to go it gradually, step by step. slowly, step by step. Mashallah. We're going to take a short break, inshallah, and we'll be right back discussing the issue of reaching the middle path here on Peace TV. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs> Where truth is hidden, and misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulated scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth? And who has the courage to expose it? Because it's your right to know the truth. Right. Watch truth prevail and lies perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik Every Sunday to Friday at 9 p.m. and repeat telecast at 7.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. The more you hear about it, the more you desire to prepare for it. Life after death. Journey of the soul. The day of resurrection. The torment of the hellfire. The reward of paradise. Stay tuned for a life-changing, heart-softening, spiritually uplifting series about the hereafter exclusively on Peace TV. Know the vivid descriptions of paradise and hellfire from the Quran and authentic ahadith and acquire life-changing habits to be successful in the hereafter. Every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and repeat telecast at 5.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. <laughs>
العزيز The Almighty الودود The All Loving التواب The Acceptor of Your Return الرزاق The Provider الرقيب The All Watchful ولله الأسماء الحسنى To Allah belongs the beautiful names فادعوه بها To call him upon them To understand more of Allah's beautiful names Join me, your brother Majid Mahmoud On my new series about understanding Allah's beautiful names on Peace TV Don't miss the chance to comprehend the seamless explanation of Allah's beautiful names in understanding Allah's beautiful names. Every Saturday at 7 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12 p.m. UK on Peace TV. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 011 IBAN GB49ARAY 30008301132301. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Thursdays provide. In Britain, we are facing one big problem that are you Muslim or British? The space to talk. In India, back home, they ask, are you a Muslim first or Indian first? And we Muslims should know how to reply, how to turn the tables over. The place to knock. Why Trinity cannot be regarded in that sense? Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The opportunity to ask. But even if we agree that what the Christians say, that he was crucified, so if Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, died for three days, who controlled the world? That means even God died? The freedom to unmask. So there are various ways which we can prove the argument to be wrong. Let's meet Dr. Zakir every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Who was the first prophet? Was a prophet the first one to read and write? Did God speak to a prophet? A prophet in a prison. A prophet who commanded the birds, insects, and animals? Want to know more? Join us for Stories of the Prophet. Stories of the Prophets every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 10.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. Yeah, 
According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 011 IBAN GB49ARAY 3000830113230301. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. Just before the break, we were talking about steps in achieving this middle path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for us. And I believe probably the first thing is uh, knowledge, having knowledge and knowing what this path is. How can you achieve something if you do not know uh, what you're going to, towards or what does it look like? So having knowledge. And before the break, we're talking with Sheikh Salim. I believe if I'm taking the right point, it would be gradualism would be the next point in achieving the right. Would you like to elaborate a little bit more on that? Inshallah? Alhamdulillah. See, first of all, we have to understand the obligations in Islam. Obligation Islam, they are furud, so they you have to prioritize, mm -hmm. and they are sunan. Mm -hmm. So what is obligatory takes the the first priority. Mm -hmm. So you need to sort out the the priorities. Though all are part of the deen, but if you equate all of them and you want to do them all in one go, you'll find difficulty. That's why the youth they need guidance, and they need someone to tell them. Take it easy. Hold your horses. Hold your horses. It's a long way. It's a long way to go. That's why Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As towards the end of his life said, I wished I had accepted the piece of advice. Because now he's old. Huh? He couldn't do what he used to, to do. That's why the other hadith, the one who is beating his horse or his camel, his mount, through the journey for the camel or the horse to speed up, he will not reach his destination because his mount will collapse. It's fine. See? Animal rights right there. Yeah, his mount will and collapse. he has not saved his animal. And his animal. So that's why Islam, my dear brothers and sisters, okay, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he was teaching the Arabi who came and embraced Islam, he taught him the five prayers. That's it. He said, and I will enter the Jannah. Yeah. He said, by Allah, I will not. Aflaha in Sadaq. Aflaha in Sadaq. I will not add any single raka. And the Prophet ﷺ said, indeed, he will be successful if he is telling the truth that he will pray these five prayers and not missing them. So the problem that without the knowledge, you don't know how to sort out and how to prioritize and which comes before the other. That's why Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentioned, لا يكون العالم عالما حتى يعرف خير الخيرين وشر الشرين. You will not be considered as a scholar unless you know which deed is more rewardable than the other, good deeds, mm -hmm. but which one has more reward than the other, and which evils is less than the other. If you cannot differentiate, you are not alim. Subhanallah, this reminds me of a trend that I personally passed through it, and I see a lot of the youngsters pass through it when it comes to religious commitment. When Allah Azza wa guides us in the very beginning, we tend to find those who are newly committed to the religion to be tough, rough, rude. And a lot of the people are agitated and 
they don't like what they see, and they have all the right not to like what they see because this is not proper Islam. But if you analyze this, it is like when you're carrying a piece of jewel in your hand and someone says, uh, excuse me, what's the time? And you think that he wants to take your jewel. So you start to be a little bit aggressive or defensive. And this is due to lack of knowledge. The more you get knowledge and you get to understand the wisdom and how to be wise, the more you tend to loosen your grip, but to put the jewel where it should be put. And this is why when we started to practice Islam at the very beginning, we had our priorities mixed up. So wearing the hijab for a sister is not questionable. This is a fard. But going to extremes in being disrespectful to your mom because she's listening to music, this is totally unacceptable and your hijab has nothing to do with this. So you have this mixed emotions and wrong priorities. A brother wearing the beard, mashallah, the th this is mandatory. We have no question in that. But at the same time, he is abusive to his wife. He beats her up. He slanders her, thinking that he's disciplining her or uh, he's abusive to his neighbor. Why? He doesn't give salam. Okay, mashallah, you have a long beard or you look like a Muslim. Why don't you give salam to your neighbor? Or you to, uh, I haven't seen them pray. <laughs> so that this doesn't make them kafir. Maybe they pray when you don't see them. Oh, no, no, no. Whoever abandons prayer is a kafir. This type of extremism, of jumping the gun, of cascading so many thoughts and building on them judgments is what's killing us. So I am a youth. Hmm, let me think. How can I start to do damage. Oh, the Muslim ruler of my country is Kafir. Why? Because he has a lot of allegiance to Kafir countries. And this means that his ministers are Kafirs as well because they're approving him. And the soldiers are Kafir because they're protecting them. And the police force is Kafir. And the family of the police force and the children are Kafir because they are approving their parents. And the whole society is Kafir. So who's left? Me and you. And by the way, your prayer is not that good. So I'm, only so one. I'm the only one left. There's a funny incident that just reminded me. I know one of the uh, sheikhs was telling us that he was personally with a, one guy entering the haram. And this guy seriously turned to him and says, Brother, I honestly believe that everyone here except you and I are kafir. And he was like, So it's not strange. SubhanAllah. I feel moderation or being in the middle path is simpler than sometimes what we think. No. It's basically to do what Allah has commanded you to do and abstain from what Allah prohibits you from doing. It's very simple. But if you'd like to do the extra, that comes in the next step. Mm. That's why you need to take things easily and you have to train yourself. It does take time and effort and you need the help of others and don't have these ill thoughts of other people around you, thinking that I'm the best, I can do you know, more than anyone else. You feel so much this arrogance within you, thinking that you're the best practicing person of Islam, and the others are just nothing. Judging others. That's the problem. I think if you limit yourself to doing the obligations first, doing your salah on time in congregation as a man, or as a woman during time and doing it in the right way and fulfilling all the other obligations starting with the pillars of the faith, giving zakah, fasting the month of Ramadan, making hajj if you're able to do so. These are the basics. And then you abstain from prohibitions. You don't involve yourself in riba, in lying, in fornication, all of the terrible things that we are asked to stay away from, I think that you recognize the right path and you're doing it. But if you start mixing up things, as our brothers already said, then you really don't have a campus to go by. Then you're lost. That's why you start to equate sunnah with fard and you try to, you know, overdo 
certain things at the expense of other things. But if you are waqaf in the hududillah, you are a person who sees the limits and stops there. That is going to make you, hopefully, the description or the right path of what you need to do. It's just very, very simple. Follow these things and you'll be safe. Well, we have about two minutes, inshallah. Just from the, a family perspective, people who are watching here, a father, a mother, and so on, maybe grandparents, they say, how can we as a family take some steps towards achieving this middle path, this way that the Prophet ﷺ gave us? Maybe. I believe that it is essential for the family to have communication. Extremism thrives on lack of communication. When your child is unable to voice his thoughts to you and get guidance, we tend not to listen to our kids. Daddy, I'd like to talk about, they take 50 reals and go and buy some candies. I don't feel like talking to you or reprimanding whenever he says something that I feel is not right. Are you crazy? You're kafir? You don't pray Fajr today. Get away from my face. We have a big problem. So we have to start to communicate with our kids. And this is essential. I've met in one Southeastern country I was in recently, and I met two of the takfiris. And they came posing the question where they usually expect the sheikh or the da'i to give them a lecture that we all know of obeying the wali al-amr of this of that. Yeah. And I've met so many of them. So I said, by turning the table to them, said, Wallahi, what you're saying is a good question, but what do you think the answer should be? Can you give me a couple of scenarios? Hmm. And he refrained. Because he knows that if he talks, he's going to reveal himself. Close himself, yeah. Therefore, we need to listen more than talking, especially to these extremists. Let them talk. Okay, let's see what you have. And then we will try to refute what you're saying. So the family needs this communication. They need a lot of knowledge. They need to be injected with lots and lots of the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ. When we connect our children, our wives, to the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, then they will be, inshallah, safe. Inshallah. Yes. Quickly, the knowledge is the, inshallah, the solution, the ilm, to immunize the children, to give them immunity. Immunization, yes. So they know, they have brought up that this is the Islam, and what is said is nonsense. They know it. Yeah. MashaAllah, Zakwala Khair again, a very beneficial episode, and we hope that you, the audience, benefited from this. We'll leave you again with the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we'll see you on the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.